Hi guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you my March Mystery Madness wrap-up. I read seven books in March, and I completed all six of the prompts, and I'm super excited to talk about all of these books. The first prompt was Shelf, and this was just, you know, pick a book off your shelf, pick a book off a library shelf, you know, pick a book, you know, whatever book you want, basically. And for this one, I read Jane and the Wandering Eye, and uh, I originally was going to read this for the new prompt, but I decided to switch it around. As you'll see, I did quite a bit of switching with my TBR. This is the third book in the Jane Austen mystery series, and Jane is investigating a death at a theater in Bath. And it's Christmas time, and so it's not really a Christmas mystery, though. But she's investigating a theater, and so she goes into the backstage area, and she... It's following people around and, you know, the secret passageways and, um, you know, lost jewelry and secret paintings and all kinds of really interesting stuff. This was a fun book and I'm glad I read it. Of course, I'm reading all 13 of the Jane Austen mystery series this year. And this is a good addition to the series. It's not a spectacular mystery, but it's a pretty good, you know, cozy mystery. I'm enjoying the series. The next prompt is Borrow, and for this one, I picked The Life We Bury by Alan Eskin, and of course, Borrow was just borrow from a friend, borrow from the library, borrow from whoever, just borrow a book. So I picked this one, I borrowed this from my library. I had chosen to read this for the opposite prompt, but um, I also was going to read A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny, and I never got it from the library, so I just decided to switch it around and put this in the borrow category instead. This is the one I just finished this morning, so it's my last read for March Mystery Madness. This is about Joe Talbert, and he goes to interview this a guy for a class that he's doing, and the guy was in prison for murder for a long time, and over the course of t t talking with him, he realizes that this guy probably didn't do the murder, and so he and his next-door neighbor, Lila, start trying to figure out who actually committed the murder, and they get case files, and they get help from the police eventually, but they are mostly just amateurs working on this. This is actually the first book in the series. The second, the series is the Detective Max Rupert series, which I didn't know. Max Rupert does not play like a huge role in this book, but he does come in at the end to help the kids, you know, the students, once they have figured out the bulk of the work and they prove their case to him. But this was a really interesting book. It is quite dark and depressing. Um, the main character, the main murderer, the, mur the, the alleged murderer, Carl, has had some pretty terrible things happen in his life. And then, of course, how the victim is killed in this book is very disturbing as well. So I don't recommend this for people unless you're, you know, going to be able to handle the bad stuff in here. But overall, a really great book, and I'm glad I read it. It's been on my TBR since December 2016, so it's about time I got around to it. The next prompt is new, so this could be pick a new book, like a new release, pick a new CU genre, pick a new CU author, you know, a book you just bought, whatever, fit the new prompt. And for this one, I read Murder is Bad Manners by Robin Stevenson. This is the first book in the, um, what is it, Most Unladylike? Uh, well, over here it's called the Wells and Wong Mysteries, but in Ameri in England it's like the most unladylike murder detective agency or something like that. Anyway, uh, this was a brand new to me series, a brand new to me author, and I guess you could argue it's a brand new to me genre because I don't usually read, um, juvenile mi mysteries. This is like a middle grade mystery. And hey, I did complete a book for middle grade March by reading this. So this is um, about Daisy and Hazel and they're in a boarding school in England in 1934 and a teacher winds up dead. And then when Hazel's the one that discovers the body and when she goes to tell him, tell somebody that the there's a murder, they come back and their body's not there. So they're trying to figure out who murdered her and where her body went. And this is just a really fast read. I read most of this in like two days. Really cute. Um, a lot of it's 
um, shown through the form of Hazel's case notes when they have meetings for their detective agency. And then they also, like, go exploring, and they fake illness to get out of class, and they do, they do all kinds of things that a normal middle grade um, girl would do. It's really cute. Highly recommend it. And I got this out of the library to take a picture of it for the Instagram challenges. And then I just decided to keep it and read it. And yes, very cute. I'm glad I read it. The next prompt was historical. And for this one, you can read a book that was published recently or, you know, in present day that's set in a historical time. Or you could go back and read a classical mystery, a classical, a classic mystery, you know, like, um, Dorothy Sayers. Agatha Christie, whoever. So yeah, this book, I did stick with the same book that I had originally chosen. This is Girl Waits with Gun for, by Amy Stewart. This is about Constance Cop, and she lives in 19, um, 1930s, I believe. 1914. 1914, um, in the New Jersey area, but she also goes to New York City quite a bit in the course of this murder. This is actually not a murder mystery. It's a mystery about um, they know who committed the crime against them. It's just about them trying to put him in jail. And so um, they're, at the start of the story, they get in an accident with this guy. And his car hits their carriage. And they're trying to get their money you know, to fix the carriage, and the guy turns out to be part of this, like, gang, and the gang starts attacking them, attacking their house, and threatening their younger sister, and so it's about Constance trying to, you know, catch this guy and get their money back, but it's also about Constance's personal life, she's had some, um, things happen in her youth, and so you see flashbacks, and it's just a really cute book, y'all, and there's three, there's, yeah, three others in the series, the fourth one coming out later this year, and this was just a really quick, well, not quick, but yeah, mostly it was quick because I read it in like three days. And it was a really fun read, and I'm glad I read it. So I would highly recommend this if you're looking for a historical mystery. And there's no murder. It's just the guy, you know, trying to catch the guy so that he could go to prison. So it's not a murder mystery at all. But yeah, it's a really great book. The next prompt was foreign, and for this one you could read a book that was set in a foreign country that was originally written in a foreign language and then translated. You could also do a genre that was foreign to you or an author that was foreign to you, but just something that was foreign. And for this one I picked The Likeness by Tara French. I, this is foreign to me because it's set in Dublin, Ireland. This is the second book in the Jer Dublin Murder Squad series. This one follows Cassie, who was in the first book, but she's been moved into domestic violence after the events of the first book and so she is working on a domestic violence case when she gets called in to see this victim and the victim looks exactly like her and it's also using an ID that she had in her undercover days and so it's decided that the best way to catch this book this girl's murderer is for her to go undercover and to, you know, sort of infiltrate um, her life and get to know her housemates and do things like that. And this, and this girl has several secrets that Cassie is trying to decipher as well. And this is a really great book. Um, this is Tanya French has very lyrical writing. She tends to get very flowery, flowery with her descriptions, though. So sometimes she can't get a little tedious in that regard. But on the whole, she, this is a really great book. And I highly recommend this series if you're interested in, in a murder mystery series that's more um, literary and, you know, more philosophical and things like that. I already put the third book on my TBR, so I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, and I should say, this was my original pick for foreign as well. So I didn't switch anything out. Then the last prompt was opposite. And so this could be, you know, read two books that are opposite of each other, read something that you wouldn't normally read that's an opposite to your reading taste, um, just whatever um, you want to do for this prop. It's sort of like an open-ended opposite prop. For this one, I ended up picking, um, I ended up putting this in, in, I had put this in on my shelf, but this is Magpie Murder. Um, by Anthony Horowitz, and so I put this as an opposite prompt. And the reason I did that is because there are actually two mysteries going on at the same time in this book. So one takes place in the modern day, and it's about the author of this very popular mystery series, and his editor is trying to figure out what happened to him. And then um, the other one, you get to see the manuscript that the author that was killed was murdered. 
Ernst, the author that was murdered, was writing. And that mystery is actually set in, you know, like the 1950s in, you know, rural England. And so this is showing two totally different mo mysteries in one book. So those are two opposite mysteries. So that's why I picked it for the opposite. I enjoyed this one as well. I did find the, um, story kind of convoluted and especially the classic mystery it seemed very slow and I didn't enjoy that part as much but once it got really into the you know modern day mystery things really picked up and it really turned out to be a great mystery and yeah I really enjoyed this and I would highly recommend this one as well. So the only books I didn't end up reading from my TBR were Camino Island by John Grisham, which it was my original pick for borrow, but I'm going to just save this. It's from my dad. He doesn't need it back anytime soon, so I'm not worried about finishing it. I also didn't finish my two bonus books because I didn't have time. I wasn't going to read Case Histories by Kate Atkinson and A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny, neither of which happened, but I'm looking forward to getting to those sometime. If, you know, sometime this year, if not next year, for the next Mars Mystery Madness. I did also read one book that doesn't count for any prompts. I read um, The Great Detective, The Amazing Rise and Immortal Life of Sherlock Holmes by Zach Dundas. This was, I was going to do a mystery history talk on this, but I ended up running out of time. And also, I didn't enjoy this book nearly as much as I, as I thought I would. This is, I thought it was going to be more about like Arthur Conan Doyle's inspiration for Sherlock Holmes and things that were going on in his time. And it was a little bit about that, but a lot of it was about like fandom, both the fandom that developed while Arthur Conan Doyle was still writing the um, series and then modern day fandom, you know, like people that watch BBC Sherlock and Elementary, and then it goes back to talk about like Jeremy Brent um, edition, and it's but it's, it's more about, like, the fandom. And that was interesting. But I also felt like it was kind of weird, because, like, it's modern-day history, and he's sort of trying to take, like, a comparative view, and I don't know. It was okay, but I wouldn't really recommend this unless you're, like, a Sherlock Holmes super fan. And, because, like, I consider myself a Sherlock Holmes fan to some extent, but I didn't even get... You know, I didn't even love this book like I thought it would. But it was still a good book, and I'm glad I got to one nonfiction book a month this month, because I would have felt bad if I hadn't read anything that was nonfiction. And of course, this relates to mystery, because Sherlock Holmes is like the most famous detective of all. So otherwise, besides all reading the book, I did do pretty well with the other parts of March Mystery Madness. Um, I did the Instagram post for the first 20 days in a row, and then I started my new job and I sort of fell off. But I did post one, the last picture of all the books I read this morning, so that was good. And then I hosted two, uh, no, three sprints, and that was really great. People came, and there were some people that came to every one, so that was really cool. And then I also, um, what else did we do? I did post in the Goodreads group a little bit. Um, so yeah, I feel like I did pretty well in terms of hosting. Oh, and I also did my March Mystery, or my my Mystery History Talk, the f number one. And I was going to do two, but like I said, I ran out of time. And I wasn't really inspired by the book I read. I also did the um, March Mystery Madness book tab. And so I did post my two videos for March Mystery Madness that I had committed to. So I'm quite pleased about that. So overall, co-hosting was a great experience. And I'm really glad that Elizabeth asked me to co-host. I really enjoyed the month. And I'm looking forward to next year. I hope everybody else had a great March. And you read lots of great mysteries. And I'm really excited to see everybody else's wrap-ups. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!